I've been auditing Blender version 3, and it is really great. But I found something that I want to share with you. It has to do with the physics engine. One of the beautiful things about open source is you can have a library of different versions of the software. What we're looking at here is an attempt that I've made to recreate the smoke simulation that I used for the introduction to my series Awareness. So I'm first going to show you the original, and I was unable to recreate this using Blender version 3. The original was done on Blender version 2.9. So let's take a look. This is the 2.9 version. So we start with this smoke and slowly we see the word awareness appear. Now let's take a look at what I've done using version 3. Now, I have to tell you in advance that it's not the same. I'm not even trying to do the same because I was unable to do the same. So this is a very different version of sort of the same thing. I actually like this one better in some ways. but <laughs> Then again, I like the old one better in some ways too. So I'm not going to get into the details of how they differ and why and what it is about version 3 that can't do what version 2.9 did. I just want you to keep that in mind that if you're doing something sort of different, like I did here with this smoke turning into the word, that you might want to check out different versions of Blender to see what you can do with the different versions of the physics engine. Because in this case, trying to recreate exactly what I did on the old version just wasn't possible. So keep that in mind. And again, it's great that you can have as many different versions of Blender as you want, so you can <laughs> explore all of the features that keep changing. So that being said, I'm going to explain a little bit about how I did this new version. So here we have on the screen the setup that I have for this effect. As you can see, I have a simple smoke domain and a text object. And if you understand how the physics engines work, then we really don't need to go any deeper than that in terms of what I have set up here. How the effect happens is the interesting part. All I'm doing is using the vorticity of the smoke, but I'm playing the effect backwards. And so I'm rendering 255 frames, and we are actually, when we watch the animation, we're beginning at 255 and going backwards. And so as we're doing that, I'm animating the camera. It's starting very tight. And here we see what the camera sees. And so it's very close and very tight. And so we just see the smoke. And as you can see by the graph here in terms of what I've done with the vorticity, if we were watching it going forwards, you can see it began at 0 0.1. And then by frame 96 really is where I was thinking about it because we're doing 24 frames per second. It's at that point maximizing, as you can see, roughly at 0 0.2, and then just staying there. Because 
obviously, even though the value is staying the same, the vorticity is still increasing. And that's what gives us that nice little cloudy motion of the clouds themselves developing and scattering. And again, we're watching the video go backwards. And so while that's happening, the camera begins because we're looking here at frame 255 and you can see that the camera is right up tight to the very close to it so that we're just seeing the smoke filling the whole screen. And so as we go backwards, let's just go right to the first frame now and we will see that the camera will jump back to here. And so now we see the whole word and what I've done at the same time is I've played with the text object itself that's being used to generate the smoke. And so if we hide the text object, then we only see the smoke. And so with the text in place, you can see it just adds that little extra bit of detail. If I remove the smoke, now you can see that's where the smoke is being transformed from this text object. And so what I've done, if we look at the text, now you can see here that I've also got an animation in place. Again, in this case, I, I was lazy and I just started at frame 100, working backwards. And what we're looking at here is I've automated the alpha channel on the text object itself. And so as you can see, only up to, here we are roughly, well, exactly, frame 33, is up, up until that point, we just have a solid alpha of one, and then it fades down by frame 100 to zero, at which point, as you can see, it disappears. And here we have these intermediary steps, where as the camera moves, the word awareness becomes more visible. If we bring the smoke back, you can see that the actual text object disappears as we go forward, even though that's backward, right? Because the video plays backwards. And so here we can also see how that vorticity makes the word become impossible to read as it goes forward. And so we wind up with just the smoke itself that's changing on a frame by frame basis. So there you go. It's nothing overly complicated or intricate, but I was not able to make it function the same way as it does in version 2.9. And so it's up to you to decide when you're doing these sorts of things. It's an artistic decision what you want the outcome to look like. And I'm actually torn between the two. I like some aspects of this version 3 version of this smoky word animation, but there are some objects, some, sorry, some aspects of the version 2.9 version of the smoky word animation that I like better as well. So I guess you could always blend between the two of them or something like that as well. Now, one last note is that I have a similar situation with another animation that I did for one of my music videos, and that was using liquid, the fluid simulation. And that was on an older version still. That was on version 2.81. And the difference between 2.81 for fluid and version 3 for fluid is dramatic. I couldn't even get anything remotely similar in that regard. It was a shocking difference, actually. I was very surprised. And so that one is probably beyond the scope of 
doing one of these silly little videos on unless people want an advanced tutorial. But I don't think that many people would be interested in that because if you're into doing that kind of work, you're not going to need a tutorial anyway. So just keep that in mind that if you're doing really crazy fluid simulations, 2.81 is the version you want, not 3. So let's just leave it at that for now.